Atlanta. I'm your pastor, Joe. To God be the glory for all things. I said to God be the glory for all things. We were entered to your gates with thanksgiving. Come on. We were entered to your courts with praise. We will, we will declare that you are the God and besides you there is none other. We come this morning with our shouting shoes on. We come this morning with our dance shoes on. And we're ready to run, sing, shout, jump, hop, skip, whatever it's going to take today. My Father God, if it be thine pleasure, if it be thine will, will you send your Shekinah glory today so that souls will be saved, bodies will be mended, minds will be regulated, hearts will be changed in Jesus Christ's name. We decree all things and we count it done. Amen. Hey man, just let you know I feel like screaming. Woo! Let you know you, you come to the right place this morning. I feel like hollering and screaming today. So to God be the glory for all things. Amen. Hey, glory. Woo! Oh, glory. You know, um, every now and again, the they try to um, stay right there. Every now and again, they try to um, stop me from doing this. Every now and again, they try to stop me from doing that. And, uh, and, uh, and sometimes I don't understand it. Sometimes I do. I believe they trying to preserve the life of PJ. But I'm going to tell you what. What PJ going to do. I'm going to give it all I can give it. For as long as I can, for as long as I can give it. Yes, I will. Yes, I will. I give it as hard as I can for as long as I can. Amen. And just so you don't, you don't get it twisted this morning, I'm from the tribe of Judah. So praise can break out at any moment. Amen. I say praise can break out at any moment because I'm from the tribe of Judah. Amen. To Thine be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Father God, we come before thee asking you for all things, expecting all things, embracing all things that come from you. Thank you, Father God, for your word, Father God. May the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Sweet Jesus, if there's anything that I've done that will cast a shadow over this word of God, I repent for it right now. Now, Father God, you have free reign. Use my vocal cords. Use my vocal cords. In Jesus' name, may I speak with authority, may I speak with power, may I speak on purpose, may I tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, in Jesus' name. I'll close it out later, amen. Well, um, um, this morning, um, if, if you don't mind, um, can I just chit chat with us, amen? If you don't mind, I just want to kind of like, um, kind of, kind of go back to the old school. Y'all remember what the porch was like? You kind of went on the porch and, and you went over to your grandmama's house or somebody's house. But back in the day, they built porches, you know, and everybody kind of sat on the porch and you talked about anything, amen. And so can we, can we embrace that this morning, amen? Yes, I'm Pastor Joe, but I want to be Uncle, Uncle Joe just for a few minutes, amen. 
can we chit chat just for a minute? If you don't mind, I just want to chit chat. Now, I got a little bit, a lot, quite a bit of um, fertilizer this morning. So um, I don't know which one it's going to take to fertilize us, but, but I came equipped with a whole bag of fertilizer. Amen. And so if you don't mind, can we get the fertilizer over with? At the beginning, amen. So, so um, can you turn to Luke chapter 15? I got my sweet darling wife here, amen. And 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 I know I can read this, but I'm I'm gonna let her read it just so we can hear it. Um, and um we can march on, amen. And so please pay close attention to the things you will hear read in your hearings, hearing it on this morning amen. amen um this first one it's a familiar scripture we call it the prodigal son story but if you look at the bible it says the parable of the lost son <laughs> lord have mercy can you put us on fm this morning because if we on am we're gonna miss it amen it's so 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 everybody switches Switch your stations right now. We, we're going to F him. Amen. Um, Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 32. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know I said the same thing. He know. But the, um, at the end of the day, everything else shall fade away, but God's word will last forever and a day. Amen. Um, and it reads like this. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. Somebody shout, two sons. Two sons. Somebody use your outside voice on the inside and scream at a brother and say, two sons. Two sons. If you're watching us online right now, I'm going to need you to holler inside your house, your crib, your crib, whatever you call it, your place of dwelling, and holler at a brother and say, he had two sons. Two sons. Two sons. Two sons. I don't want you to forget that. He had two sons. Go ahead, baby. The, the younger one said to his father, mm -hmm. Father, give me my share of the estate. Lord, help us. So he divided his property between them. Mm -hmm. Not long after that, the younger son got together all he had, mm. set off for a distant country, mm. and there squandered his wealth in wild living. Somebody say he lost it all. Having fun. Having fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I thought that would kind of hurt you. Somebody say, he lost it all. He lost it all. Having fun. Having fun. Yeah, that's what that squander mean. Uh, uh, nah, yeah. He out there living it up. Boozing, oozing, and, and doozing. I guess I'm going to use all that to, together. Amen. <laughs> Just excuse me if none of this stuff makes sense to you till later. Amen. He out there boozing, oozing, and having a little fun. Amen. There, as as the young folks saying, being me, uh -oh. okay. huh? Out there being me, but now he done lost it all. Being me, y'all better watch it, people when they tell you just be you. Amen. Lord help us, maturity, maturity. Go ahead, baby. Fourteen says what? After he had spent everything, mm. there was a severe famine in that whole country, and he began to be in need. Lord have mercy if he would have known that a famine was coming. Men's Bertha, if these young folks would have just listened to the old folks tell them, you better save some squirrel money, because hard days are coming. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. This kind of church we're gonna be? Okay, y'all ain't gonna have no hard days, okay? Okay, well, well then, this son approached hard days. Didn't realize hard days was coming, so he spent it all. <coughs> now, uh, let Coley Cole tell you <laughs> she ain't gonna ever in her long legged life spend all her cash if she can help it. Huh? 
<laughs> ah, glory. Amen. Somebody say, had he known. Somebody out of Harlem and say, had he known. That young son, this the young son. We got any young sons and young daughters here. Had you known that you wasn't grown at 28. What I just say? What I just yeah, grown. They grown. I ain't grown and I'm 53. Right. How you grown and you 28? Right. But the, I get it. I get it. Keep living life. Phantoms are coming. Right. Somebody, I like that. Say it again, Sister Andrea. Help us, Jesus. Help me before I hurt me. <laughs> Lord have I told you my might be a whole lot of screaming. Go ahead, baby. Keep reading. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. Lord have mercy. Lord, how bad can it get, Ma? Now I'm sitting here after having everything. Squand squandering. Mm -hmm. Now I'm sitting here hanging with the pigs. Oh, Lord. <laughs> nah. So he found himself prostituting himself. To the highest bidder. And the only one that would bid for him was a pig farmer. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Go ahead, baby. Go ahead, go ahead. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs were eating, mm. but no one gave him anything. Lord have mercy. I can get so broke down that anything is feasible. I'll eat anything. I hang out. I can get so broke down. I can hang anywhere. I can lose my compass, John, and you'll find me anywhere. <laughs> Lord, go ahead, baby. Keep reading. I'm going to let you go on and read it. Just keep reading. Help us. When he came to his senses, mm -hmm. he said, How many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. Come on, keep reading. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. Father, I have sinned against heaven and you. I will go back after I find my senses. After I realize that it was never really about me. I'll go back and repent. I hear you, John. I hear you, John the Baptist. Repent. Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. See, see now, we don't like using terms like, like, like that no more. This is what rocks the church now. Turn around five times and your, and your blessings here. Not that you're living any kind of way, it's not. If I turn around and I'm a hell and, and, and I'm full of hell and my blessings in front of me, I bet not eat. Right. It's dangerous. Mm -hmm. That's so true. Full of hell. Full of disruption. Right. Full of hatred. Yeah. Pride, envy. You just keep naming them. No, God says let's fix the inside. Go ahead, baby. Keep reading. 
I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Mm -hmm. Make me like one of your hired servants. Go ahead. So he got up and went to his father. Mm -hmm. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. Mm -hmm. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and kissed him. Lord have mercy. Before this boy had got cleaned up, Before he had took a bath. He was once removed from the pigs. So you can imagine how he looked. What he smelled like. He wrapped his arms around this boy. Kissed him. Lord have mercy. Keep reading baby. The son said to him. Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. Mm -hmm. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Amen. But the father said to his servants, quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Come on. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Mm -hmm. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Mm -hmm. Let's have a feast and celebrate. Come on. For this son of mine was dead Dead. and is alive again. Mm -hmm. He was lost Lost. and is found. Yes. So they began to celebrate. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Meanwhile, uh the older son was in the field. Mm -hmm. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. Uh Uh-huh. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Uh huh. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf mm-hmm. because he has him back safe and sane. Come on, 28. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. Everybody ain't gonna be everybody ain't gonna be happy with your deliverance. Mm. Everybody, I said it ain't gonna be happy with your breakthrough. Everybody don't want to see you free. Everybody don't want to see you delivered. Everybody don't want to see you make it. Everybody don't want to see you survive. Somebody want to see you wig out. Somebody want to see you wild out. Somebody want to see you act the fool. Everybody will not be satisfied with your freedom. reading baby lord have mercy so his father went out Uh and pleaded with him lord but he answered his father look all these years i have been slaving for you come on and never disobeyed your orders Uh uh-huh yet you never gave me even a young goat so i could celebrate with my friends come on but when this son of yours who has squandered your property with prostitutes comes home you kill the fattened calf for him. They will tell the truth about where you've been. Well, I'm going to rewind that. They will tell facts about where you've been. But they won't reveal the truth about where you at. Right. Anybody used to be something... Huh? Yeah. Anybody used to be something? Yeah. I'm looking at you right now. We're all in that big room of used to be's. Used to be a hellraiser. Used to be. Used to be a liar. Used to be. Used to be. Can I say slut in the church? Used to be a gigolo. Some of y'all may, may not know these old terms, amen. But. But just look them up when you get here. What in the world is a gigolo? Did, did the PG just say PJ? PJ just say gigolo? Yeah, did he just say yeah, 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 yeah. You should be a murderer. Right, right. Okay, them don't fit you. I'm coming out. You're wrong. Used to eat too much. Used to lie. Used to cheat. Used to, used to spread false rumors. Used to talk too much. Didn't talk enough. Huh? Can I go on down this street? Or the easy street you live on? Used to 
used to be scared. Used to live in fear. Anybody used to be something? And there's somebody know what you used to be. And they'll talk about what you used to be to anybody. I had somebody tell me, you know what? I heard somebody talking about you the other day. Really? What was they, they said, how much did you used to lie? Oh, Lord. Guess what? I say, that was me. Huh? I agree with it. It was me. <laughs> Can we finish? Go on and finish, baby. Because My son, the father said, you are always with me. Uh-huh. And everything I have is yours. Everything, yeah, go ahead. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. This brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost. Now he's found. Lord help me. Can I, can I lean in on you just for a little bit since we See, if I already in the Bible, can I just lean in on you since this is the church? Yep. Amen. If I go to a football game, I expect to see football. Mm -hmm. right. right. So if I go to church, I expect to hear the word. Amen. Right. So excuse me if I make this churchy. <laughs> Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Out of the message Bible reads like this. I'm going to try to get this one, baby, if you don't mind. Just... If I can't, then I'll bump pick at you and you can get your read on. Amen. Y'all watch this. 18 says this. Forget about what happened. Don't keep going over old history. Lord help us. Be alert. Be present. I'm about to do something brand new. It's bursting out. Don't you see it? There it is. I'll make a road through the desert. Rivers in the bad lands. While that's set on you for a minute, try this out for size. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if, therefore, if, Please listen to me. Cooler, the thing said, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. Let that set on you for a minute. Woo! Let that set on you for a minute. Matthew. 5, 14 through 16. I know, I know, I know, I know, but though he came to football game, so you might as well watch the football game now since you're here. Amen. It says this. Here's another way to put it. You're here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this. As public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, do you think I'm going to hide you under a bucket? Do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I put you there on a hill, on a light stand, shine. Right. I need that for last. So on um, this morning, with the short time I have. Amen. Do y'all mind me dealing with this, this topic? Amen. I want to talk this morning, Sister Andrea, about 
the process. Can we talk about the process? Lord help us. You know, um, can I start here? Let's just chit chat for a minute. I remember when, when Nicole first got pregnant. Well, no, I remember when we first got married. Let's go there. And she came in one day shortly after we got married. She told me I'm pregnant. <laughs> Y'all go with me because I'm going somewhere. Oh, how I longed to become a daddy now. I did. I got married to become a daddy. I did. I did. That's one of the reasons why I said I, I got to get married. You know, um, see, see, we date over four years. Y'all just listen. We, we date over four years. And, and all I wanted to do was to become or to rightfully become a daddy. See, um, we dated. I know sometimes we don't even deal with courtship no more. I know some of us don't even realize what courtship is no more. Amen. What courting is no more. That's like dating. Amen. That's old school word for dating. We don't even date no more. But we just get it on. Amen. But, but though, there are people around here that still want to be rightfully a daddy. See, um, my daddy always made it seem cool to be a daddy. He did. I remember when we were young and my daddy was about my size then. I remember we used to swing on his arms. Oh, yeah, we used to swing on his arm. There was the, there was the, the bald-headed Richard C. Miller senior. The bald-headed, yep, 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 he used to be a bald-headed. And we put on glasses too, cool, you cool remember that. And we used to, he used to tell us to grab his arms and we'd swing us. Man, my daddy made... My daddy made being a daddy look so cool. My daddy always seemed to be to be um, cool at being a daddy. See, um, he protected us. He fought for us. He prayed over us. He taught us. I thought I had one of the coolest dads in the world. This is why I could not wait to grow up and become a daddy. So at the tender age of about 18, 19, when I was grown, <laughs> I used to dream about how it would be to have my own family and what I would do the same as my daddy and what could I improve and do different so when Cole came and told me she was pregnant and I was going to be a daddy all I heard was be a daddy I didn't hear I was going to be a daddy Somebody missed that. All I heard was, be a daddy. I missed the part about going to be a daddy. Even after all the time of waiting and growing up, finding Nicole, and then dating her for four years, I still had to wait because it was a process to pregnancy. She didn't tell me I was going to be a daddy. And tomorrow, I was. <laughs> See, the process, Ma, included nine months. A pregnancy. Yeah. Nine long months. Then there were false labor pains. What in the world was that? Now she tricking me. Now she having labor pains, but they are false. That there was a 
process to actually getting this done. And, and then the walking. We walked and we walked and we walked for days. Because, because they told us the closer you get, the more you walk, it would speed it up some kind of way. <laughs> but I found myself waiting because it was a process. The process. And then finally, she was in the delivery room. I can remember like it was yesterday, y'all. She was in the delivery room. She was having contractions off the screen. And her doctor wasn't here. And Nicole told them, ain't nobody delivering this baby but Dr. Clock. I looked at her with my sanctified eyes. I said, baby, we're going we to have it. No, 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 no. She said, let's wait on Dr. Clock. So now I find myself still. Then Dr. Clark gets there. First thing he did was roll his sleeves up. I'm thinking, I can't tell you what, what I really is going to say, okay? I'm thinking, if you don't get over here. So then he started scrubbing himself. Cleaning himself. Because he didn't want to spread no germ. It's a process. Then he grabbed his stool. And he rolled over. And, and as he was sitting in front of Nicole. In the stirrups. I think that's what they call it. No. That's that what they call it. Whatever. They, they call it them things that they put the lady's leg, legs in. And it just, just opens up for you. Amen. Okay. So. um, ooh, that, Okay. Okay. We're not going down that road, Ma. Okay. Let's go down the delivery road. Amen. But the Lord help me. Church babies come from somewhere. Amen. All right. Y'all watch this. And so then he started talking to the nurse. He said, um, where is her? Where is her? How is? How is? And so the nurse was, was just rattling stuff off. By the way, I'm looking at him like, dude, can we just have this baby? He said, yes, we are about, about to have this baby. So, so he told Nicole, baby, trust me, at your next contraction, push. I start doing this, y'all. Finally, it's here. And she pushed. He said, next one, instead of pushing up here, push down here. Because Cole was doing it. He said, I don't need you pushing up here. And then he said, if you don't push down there, we ain't ever going to have this baby. The next time, the head popped out. He said, hold up. I'm thinking, let, let the rest come out. He said, hold up. I, I see his head. And so me, I'm. <laughs> he know. And so, and so then, the, then, the, then, the, then, then the baby came. And so I was a daddy. After the long process. Can I, can I give you one more? Then I promise you I, I'm going to take my seat. Amen. Can I, can I just, just give you one more example? And I promise you I'm going to run through this one in about 10 minutes. Amen. Y'all watch this. Y'all know that I do a lot of planting at the house. I do a lot of planting at the house. So can I use my plants as a way to encourage us this morning. So um, I got about four points I want to leave with you. Amen. Somebody write down. The first one is the pot. The second one is the soil. The third one is the plant. The fourth one is the water. After I deal with them, I might throw in one that's that's just to complete the process, so I call it the process. But um, I'm going to try to get this all into us in about five minutes. Amen. 
not at night. If they give me five extra minutes, I'll take ten. Amen. Y'all ready for this? So um, let's start with the pot. The pot. In 2 Corinthians 4 and 7, it reads like this. In the Amplified Classic, it says this. But we have this precious treasure. The good news of salvation and unworthy earthly vessels of human frailty so that the grander and surpassing greatness of the power would be shown to be from God, his sufficiency, and not our own, or not from ourselves. So, um, I'm real p particular in how I choose my pots that I'm about to plant a plant inside. I wanted to fit the style of the plant, Ma. I really do. I wanted to fit the style of the plant. So I know everybody wondering. So let me go. So in choosing a pot, I want it to, to make sure that the pot fits what I'm going to put inside of it. It's important that the pot can handle what I'm going to put inside of it. So I, I go through a lot of pots. And then I say, oh, this the one I'm going to use. This the one. Sometimes I, I use small plants. Sometimes I use big plants. And some, and some plants need a deep, need to be deep because the roots have to run deep to support what's going on top of. Amen. And so some pots just have to be deep, Mom. And so um, some pots are cute. Some pots are just big and deep. They ain't that cute, but they, but they can hold a lot. They can support a lot. So I get my pot. But the pot ain't nothing all by itself. The pot produces nothing all by itself. Okay? And so since I, I, I promised y'all about eight minutes, let me, let me go on and get to the second phase. The second phase is the soil. The soil, Naya, every pot has to have soil inside of it. Hebrews. Wait, no. Let's go to John. Let's say John 15 and 5. 15, 5 says this. I am the sprouting vine and you are my branches. As you live in union with me, as your source, fruitfulness will spring within you. But when you live separated from me, you are powerless. So um, I just don't go to the place and pick any kind of soil, ma. You know, I don't know what I like about miracle soil. Sister Bertha, but, but they put something in miracle soil. They just don't put in any other soil. They do. It's something in miracle soil that's not in regular soil. It's miracles inside <laughs> miracle soil. So, um, so y'all, I get the soil and 
and I feel the power. Y'all please pay attention. And I feel the power with soul. Gotta have soul. Gotta have. And I gotta have enough soul that will support the plan. So then I put my soul in. Lord help me. So I put my soul inside the plan. They want me to bring this around to the front. So everybody can see it, amen. And so now I'm going to go off of my memory of what I'm supposed to do. So um, just so we'll make sure everything is everything. Amen. So John, after I get my pot, I got to get my soul. And so my soul is important. Matter of fact, the soul is more important than the pot. The pot ain't too much. The soul determines how good the the plan is. So it's important what you put on the inside of this pot. Because it, de it determines what people see on the outside of the pot. Ain't nobody listening to me. Lord have mercy. So um, I got my pot. I got my soul. Now God say, you need your plan. Okay. All right. So, just so we realize, now y'all, these ain't, this ain't how I normally do it, but I just wanted to, to give you a visual. Okay. See, um, this is what we're going to plant in the, and, and I see a lot of y'all looking. This thing dead. And you write about it. You ain't lying. John, this plant is dead. But I'm about to put it in miracle soil. See, um, see, um, that's why daddy got happy. The boy was dead, but now he lives. So, um, I guess con contrary opinions, I'm going to place this dead plant into this miracle soul. Yeah. That's the one I placed in the miracle soul. Now, I got the plant. I got the soul. And I got the pot. But I need the water. Nothing happens without the washing of the water of the word. So, um, so God will send rain because I got to. Oh, but, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. What we got to do is make sure we don't lose. None of the rain. So God got this. This thing they make to catch the extra overflow. God always does things bigger than what you expect. More than what you can have. God always does more than what I expect. More than I deserve. And just so I don't lose out on that, I got this thing that I stand on that's connected to overflow.
And so then God said, Sister Mary, across my path. God, I have pastor say something. You have closed doors in your face. You will have all kinds of things that would come that's a part of the watering. Life looks different. But but I heard that 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 there was a I heard that um, in the Old Testament Moses had sent word and said for everybody to bring their staff and what they're going to do was they're going to lay it in front of the Ark of Covenant and the staff that God would choose because God has his choice on which one he's going to use and the staff that, that the, he would use, he would say, Moses, you will know the one because it would be, it would bud. It would bear fruit. Even after separating from the tree, it would bear fruit. And so after I've been potted, after the soil has been laid and after I've been planted, then the way you used to see me may not be the same way I am later. Because God is doing a whole new thing with me. God is making rivers and deserts for me. And so the way I was is not the way God intended me to be. I'm changing. But it takes a process. So um, if you don't mind, can you give me for God to complete this process in me. Can you not tell me how long it's going to take for God to complete the process? I will come to my senses. I'm going to complete the process. I don't know who's going through something right now. And you could be right in the middle of your process. Hey, in there. Better days are coming. Oh, yeah, it seems like it's all over. But that's just the process. The plans God has for us are good and not evil. The things God's doing with me are good and not evil. So can you embrace the process? So sometimes the process involves breakups. Mess ups. Death. Firings. T 
teenage pregnancy. It includes it. It does. It's the process. There's somebody sitting out there listening to me right now that's strung out on drugs, but you're about to come to your senses. Because you messed around and you had a praying mama. You had a praying grandmama. You had a believing daddy. You had a believing granddaddy. And they prayed that you would get it. And they turned you loose. Oh yeah, you blew it all. But you're coming back to your senses. So the main thing is, is for when we get back to where we're supposed to be, repent. That ain't enough of repent. The only difference between me and a sinner, I'm smart enough to repent. I know how to get it right. It's a process. You're going through a process. And I can't tell you what's in your future. I can't. I got one minute. That's it. And I want you to know this. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God had raised Jesus from the dead thou shalt be saved and after salvation you get put in the miracle soul and the process continues it's a process getting it right Getting it wrong. Getting it right. Getting it wrong. I know y'all still get it right. Getting it right. Getting it wrong. I know all y'all just get it right. Getting it wrong. Getting it wrong. It's a process. That's my time. But I want y'all to know that whatever you, you are up against, realize it's all a part of the process. It is. It's all a part of the process. Bible declared if the enemy had known that crucifying Jesus would have saved humanity he would have never crucified Jesus. But, but the enemy was a part of the process. There are, there are uncertainties ahead of us. And life changes. If I would just be transparent just for a minute, and I said I wasn't going to do it. I, did, I said I wasn't going to do it. But my life took on a change. And God said, I did that so I can develop you. And this development wasn't just for you. It was for the people that would see you and want to touch you and want to ask what happened just the other day. One of my sisters asked me, she looked at me and she was just kind of like in tears and she said, 
And she said, um, in other words, different. She said, she said, um, I'm praying for you. And she looked at me. And she gave me that look like, I don't know how you doing this. And I wanted to tell her, I don't know either. But it's just part of the process. Now, what you going to do when God orders something? You wouldn't. When God sends something or when God allows something, you wouldn't. What you going to do? And I made up my mind. I'm going to go through the process. I'm going to go through the process. As embarrassing as it is, I'm going to go through the process. As hurtful as it may be, worship now with just one that's not a process that I would have signed up for but I told the Lord I'll go through the process yes I'm not crazy I'm used to having church with my family. But God say, it ain't who you was having church with. It was who you was having church with. Because um, people talk crazy anyway. So God talk crazy. One of my biggest financial supporters is my older sister who plants seed in here every week. Now, I would love to see her, but I go through the process. So nobody escapes going through the process. Yes, I feel like crying. Yes, I feel like asking God why. And I have. And God say, so I can make you a better you. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. Seek my face. Turn from their wicked ways. Then I hear from heaven. And so what God really wants from me is to see how much love do I really have inside of me. And so my prayer is that we go through whatever the process God has for us. You know, sometimes I get in trouble because I want to, I tell too much they tell me. But um, for me to get here, repossession of cars was a part of the process. Losing homes was a part of the process. Death was a part of the process. I ask God, why would you take them? Sometimes I still don't understand why. God said it was part 
of the process. And I don't get them back. But it's part of the divine process. My dad was, was my dad, he was my deacon, then he was my pastor. And I couldn't wait for, for the tables to turn. I'm gonna tell it this morning. I couldn't wait for the tables to turn so I could be the, the, the pastor and so he could be sitting. And so if I had any questions, I could go ask him. But right when I was going to have my questions, my dad is walking in dementia now. But God said, Joe, it's a part of the process. Now we have to do everything for. Her. The other day, my mama called. She said, "Son, come to the house." I don't know what's going. So I go to the house. It's chaotic, but God said, "Don't worry about the chaos. I need you to learn something when you go, cause it's a part." of the process. Yes, I could have stopped it. Yes, I can reverse it. But what you gonna do when I don't reverse it? It's a part of the process. I know. I've taken some precious time but but the, what I want you to know is that no one escapes the process so you don't know what nobody's going through you don't know how somebody is hanging on so when God tells you Speak a word of encouragement to, as my mom would say, to Zoe. Speak a word of encouragement to her. When God say, text Naya, text Naya. Because we don't know what people are going through. But I'll be better. You hear what I tell you? I prophesy to my future. I'll be better. He tried to take me out. But I'm still here. I don't know how old I was. But I crawled up under the bed. And I bit my mama to me an electric cord. He's been trying to take me since I was young. But I'm still here. The process. So what you gonna do when your life remains the way it is? And you gotta go through the process. Life ain't always what we want it to be, baby. It ain't. 
See, people don't know. What, about 10, 15 years ago, we had a conversation. We were like, hey, I'm tired of you. I'm tired of you too. Negro, I said, I'm tired of you. Negro, I said, I'm tired of you too. It was part of the process. See, um, we ain't had sunshiny days all day. It's a part of the process. I'll hang on. I'ma hang on. I will. Ma, I won't quit. I've been planted by the rivers of water. Ain't over. This is my comeback. I know everybody laughing. He ain't gonna make it. And you're right, I ain't gonna make it. But we will make it. I serve a God that will. Serve a God that can. I serve a God who is able to keep me from falling. He's able to keep me from falling. To God. Oh, that's it. She shouldn't have said that. And his name is Jesus. Emmanuel. Prince of Peace. Jehovah Jair. My Redeemer. My, my bonds. Men. My dead pal. My sin killer. That's his name. Because I heard a song one day and then I'm done. It says this. If I lose everything and still have Jesus, I have enough to start all over again. You better believe that. Yes. If I if I lost everything, yes. thank you, Bishop Charter. If I lost everything and still had Jesus, Naya, I got enough to start all over again. Yes. God forbid me and Lady Nicole separate. But if we separate, y'all listen to me. If we separate and all is lost, my I still got enough. To start over again. Yes. If my daddy never get his memory back. If, if, if my daddy never gets his bearings the way we used to see it, Ma. We got enough to start all over again. We overcome. And how do we overcome? By the blood of the Lamb. And by the word. And by testimony. And this is my testimony. And I'll prove this message. God bless. And keep you. Is my prayer. For we live in life. In love. The process. I'm done. God bless you. That just means this was for us. And, and my, my, at times, 
I have to, I have to stake my, my um, plants. I have plants that look like trees. And they're lean. They're lean because they're too top heavy. So God says, stake them. And guess what I stake them with? In the name of the Father. Name of the Son. Name of the Holy Ghost. I triangularly stake them. I surround them by the Godhead. So they don't lean. Because sometimes we got a top heavy. If I could have, I would have brought one of my top heavy plants. But I ain't strong enough to get, to get it out the house. And JoJo wasn't here. <laughs> JoJo would have been here. I would have made him take my, take that thing, thing here and be careful. But though, it's about this tall. And, um, and they get the lean in. And God said, boy, you're younger. Go buy some steaks. And I went to buy some steaks. Sister Bertha. Sister, Sister Bertha know what I'm talking about. Because uh, it'll get the lean in. And see, I don't like small plants. I like big plants. That's right. Amen. And so God will do it. Amen. I'm done. I'm done. I got to run. God bless and keep you is my prayer. I'm out of here. Somebody, if you're happy, you know it. And your life can surely.